Have you ever wondered what would have happened if Isagi survived the wild card? Do you think he would be better than he currently is in the manga? I will be talking about what would have happened if he did end up entering the project and making it out. So, continue watching this video to find out. Majority of us think that Isagi would not be able to make it out of the wildcard project due to his physical abilities and his current development during that time. However, we do not know exactly what happened during the wildcard program, and Isagi is literally the main character who has plot armor. I still wouldn't count Isagi out since he is just him and can adapt really well. In Blue Lock, the wildcard door is a mysterious phenomenon that adds hype to the already intense survival game created by Igo Jinpachi. It is a competition that selects the best player among those who did not make it fully into the original Blue Lock project but showed potential in an unpredictable manner. The wildcard door is similar to the Blue Lock project in its focus in individuality rather than team buildup. Kunigami's goal was to become a football superhero, and after going through the program, he emerged as a proficient striker. Kunigami's origins are not fully explored in the series, but it can be inferred that he had already shown potential during the Blue Lock project, which led to his invitation to the Wild Card program. Through the program, Kunigami was able to hone his skills and become a more well-rounded player, ultimately becoming a valuable asset to the Neo Egoist League. We do not know exactly what had happened during the program, so we cannot count out the idea of Isagi getting past it, despite it being a more physical course. Let's take a look outside the realm of what actually happened for a second. What do you think would have happened if it was our boy Isagi who ended up walking through the wildcard entrance? How would Isagi have changed if he had to survive the brutal gauntlet of the wildcard? First and foremost, how would this even happen? Well, everything falls apart for Isagi when he accepts Naruhaya's offer to battle each other to the death. Or maybe that's a bit too dramatic. Everything happens just as it did, except that Naruhaya would just make his winning goal to continue in the second round. If this had happened, then Nagi would have been chosen over Isagi. This would have altered the rest of the events happening in Blue Lock with his absence. The rest of the players who passed the second selection would end up being the same, except that Isagi gets replaced by Naruhaya. Now with Isagi's absence, this would ultimately lead to the downfall of the rest of Blue Lock. As the players who have passed the second selection gets announced, Kunigami and the rest of the Egoist 4 are stunned as it was revealed that Isagi was not able to make it through. Naruhaya explains that he had to eliminate him in order for him to survive. The rest of the Egoist 4 confront him and ask him what he meant by that. But Naruhaya's guilt causes him to explain his backstory. Nagi then says that he was the one chosen instead of Isagi, and it leaves them bothered. This way, we would not have seen the match between Kunigami and Ryo against Shido and Igarashi. He would not be able to get this menacing introduction like in the manga, but instead, he interferes with their conversation. Shido asks what's so wrong with Naruhaya eliminating this so-called Isagi, and it makes Kunigami defensive. Shido explains that he doesn't care about Naruhaya's little backstory, nor does he even pity him one bit. Defeating Isagi was something that Naruhaya needed to go through in order to level up as a player. Ego then interrupts them and talks about the Japan U20 team versus Blue Lock. Everything else would then follow and stay the same. The one thing that I realized most of all was that the wildcard program's impact on the story and character development was solely due to Kunigami being the one who went through it. Every other player that we had come to know up until now would have no qualms about crushing anyone in their way to get back into the Blue Lock program, aside from maybe Reo. Kunigami was different. He was a kind-hearted and fair individual who couldn't bear to make others feel worse. This was not a trait that helped him on the field, where the only thing that mattered was winning at any cost. I realized that the wildcard program was tailor-made for Kunigami's character development and the story. The program would force him to embrace his darker side, to tap into his ego and become a true monster on the field. The fact that this program ended up breaking him was more terrifying than anything else because that might have been Ego's plan all along. However, this is why Isagi would never have been part of the wild card at all. Ego saw through his personality from the get-go. He saw his ambition and his brutality. I will be skipping the third selection since I believe that the same events would pretty much happen until the U20 match. The U20 match would end up as Ego Jinpachi expected it to. The players of Blue Lock would show off their talent in order to expose themselves to the rest of the world. Despite their efforts, they would now end up losing against the U20 without Isagi on their side. It would still be a fairly close match, but there is no doubt that the U20 would end up taking the victory. Different players will be matched with various opportunities. 
Shido would most likely join the ranks of Japanese soccer stardom with the favor of Itoshi Sai, Itoshi Rin would join the Japanese U20 team, and other players would attract interest from different leagues. Without Isagi there to push everyone, they would end up accepting defeat after Shido's miraculous goal to win the game 3-2. With everybody out of blue lock, we have to talk about how different Isagi would have been if he was the sole survivor of the wild card. Unlike Kunigami, Isagi relishes in crushing and devouring his opponents, deriving satisfaction from their defeat. Like I said, Kunigami wanted to inspire people as a football superhero, but Isagi's goal is to become like Noel Noah by winning and becoming the best. In the wild card, Isagi would have thrived as he crushes other people's dreams. Although Isagi's base physical stats are lower than Kunigami's, he would compensate with his analytical mind and rationing, making him more similar to Noah than Kunigami in terms of critical thought. In chapter 204, it was revealed that Noah and Igo were teammates 10 years ago. Although they likely lost touch, Igo would be familiar with the way Noah approaches football and the way he thinks. Isagi wouldn't refuse to learn how to play like Noah, so he would essentially become a mini Noah Noah with worse physical traits. One of the benefits Isagi would have gained from entering the wild card is the ability to perform Noah's machine dribbling. With his new body and metavision, Isagi would have been able to execute this technique with ease. His ability to use both legs may have even improved. As we saw back in the second selection that he was capable of using his left leg against the blue lock man as he consistently used his left leg. Another significant change in Isagi's playstyle would have been his improved direct shot. Not to mention he would have come out a much more decisive scorer overall. Isagi's overall speed and stamina would also have increased, allowing him to use metavision more frequently without experiencing the drawbacks. But what about Isagi's personality? Well, I do not think that his personality would have been as drastic as Kunigami's. He wouldn't have been completely broken by the end of it. Isagi derived satisfaction from being better than others at football, so there wouldn't be a pure persona for the wildcard to corrupt. He would come out of the wildcard as Ego's wildcard monster, but with a different mindset. While Kunigami came out of the wild card as a broken, soulless scoring machine, Isagi would have a completely different ambition. He would still have scoring goals as a priority and would want to show everybody that he is the most important player on the field and would crush anybody who dared to challenge him in any way. This ambition would be fueled by his desire to become the best striker in the world, a goal he has had since before even joining the Blue Lock program. The Neo Egoist League was a groundbreaking project created by Ego Jinpachi, the mastermind behind the Blue Lock project. Ego invited all of the Blue Lock players who made it to the third selection, along with the regulars from the old Japan U20 team, to decide on a country to train in. The idea was to replicate the football scene in Europe's top five leagues, namely France, Germany, England, Italy, and Spain. However, with the rest of the Blue Lock players gone, this arc story would most likely be changed with Blue Lock's loss. This is the part in the series wherein our wildcard would first appear. As the last man standing, Isagi would have to face new challenges against the rest of the four clubs as the competition quickly elevates. How would he be able to adapt to this? He would automatically be placed in Bastard Munchen because of the wildcard program. If Isagi had entered the wildcard and emerged as the sole survivor of the project, his performance in the Neo Egoist arc would have been nothing short of spectacular. His newfound physical abilities and mental toughness would have put him in a league of his own, making him a force to be reckoned with on the field. His use of metavision would only start to improve during the start of the Neo Egoist League, instead of in the second selection. However, this does not mean that Isagi would have no metavision at all. As the games carry out, Isagi would easily be able to adapt to the likes of Kaiser and consistently use metavision with his improved physical and mental abilities. Bastard Munchen would then continue to dominate the Neo Egoist League with a back and forth between a new rivalry in Isagi and Kaiser. If Isagi had entered the wild card, he would have come out as a completely different player with a new set of skills and an altered personality. He would have compensated for his physical shortcomings with his analytical mind and ambition, making him a more versatile and lethal striker. He would have been one of the most powerful strikers in the Neo Egoist League if it even existed. I will be ending the video here for now. What do you think would have happened if Isagi survived the wildcard? And if you have any scenarios that you would want me to cover, let me know down in the comments. Have you ever wondered what would have happened if Kira joined the U20 team? Check this video out right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you for watching.